Hi, in this video, we'll talk about the classifications of bacteria on the basis of their nutrition. So, like any other organism, bacteria needs nutrition to grow, and that's pretty simple. Now, let's talk about what is the basis of the classification. So, there are several criteria based on which we can classify them, such as the carbon sources that they get, the energy sources, or the electron sources that they utilize. So, based on carbon sources, there could be two divisions. One could be autotrophs, which use CO2 as the principal carbon source. One could be heterotroph, which use organic carbon as its source, such as reduced or preformed molecules from other organisms. Now, in terms of energy sources, they are subdivided into two groups. Autotrophs, that ones which use... Uh, light as an energy source and chemotrophs where where the energy source is actually organic or inorganic molecule i mean by their oxidation the energy is generated and lastly based on electron sources they can be classified into lithotrophs where the electron source is reduced in organic molecules and organotrophs where the source of electron is organic molecules so these are the basic elements or basic nomenclatures or set of rules that would help us to understand and classify a set of bacteria. Now, these are like filters that we apply for our Google search. We can have one filter at a time. We can have multiple filters at a time. So, so far what we have looked at is basically nothing but one filter at a time. Now, there could be complicated classification schemes where we have to use many of these filters together to get a better understanding or better define our category of bacteria. So let's try to understand that. So let's classify the microbes based on several filter criteria. And all the filter criteria that we'll be using are three of these together. That means energy sources, electron sources, and carbon sources together as a filter would be used for these classifications. And if we use these three filters, there would be five classes of bacteria. Namely, spoiler alert, these names are pretty difficult to pronounce. So it's photolithoautotrophy or photolithoautotrophs, photolithoorganotrophy, chemolithoautotrophy, chemolithoheterotrophy, then chemoorganoheterotrophy. Now, all these names look super absurd and weird, and almost nothing could be made out of these names. But if we know how to read these names, then a lot of information can be retrieved by just looking at the name. So let us look at that part. So these you can imagine as a bacterial nomenclature system. I mean, it is not a nomenclature system, it's a classification system based on nutrition, but think in a simple term, it's basically a bacteria's name where photo, where the first syllable means the energy source, second syllable means the electron source, and the third syllable means the carbon source. Here, photo means the energy is derived from light. Remember, in our uh, one filter criteria, we have defined all of these things, like photo are all those organisms that take energy from the light. Such so, Similarly, the electron sources are derived from inorganic uh, donors when we see the term litho and autotrophy means the carbon source is co2 now it makes sense and many bacteria fall under this category like cyanobacteria green sulfur bacteria purple sulfur bacteria to give you some idea about these uh, cl uh, classification now now we know that overall these nomenclature are not so difficult bacteria has three different syllables in their name and we just need to understand what does these syllables mean? And by looking at these syllables, what we can uh, interpret about their nutritional requirement. So all these names has their own meaning in terms of nutritional requirement, and that can be understood easily. Let's try it together. The next category is photoorganoheterotroph. Looking at the term photo, you can easily understand the energy is derived from light. Organo means it is deriving its electron from an organic donor and heterotrophy means it uses organic carbon instead of CO2. Some examples are 
green non-sulfur bacteria, purple non-sulfur bacteria. Then next category says chemolithoautotrophic. Now it's really easy to interpret, right? Chemo, that means light, the energy is not get, getting from light, but the energy source is inorganic chemicals. Then litho means electron source is inorganic donor and autotrophy means the carbon source is from CO2. Very simple. Hydrogen oxidizing bacteria, methanogens fall under these category. Chemo litho heterotrophy is the next category. Again, we can understand chemo means organic chemicals serve as an energy sources, not light. Litho means electron sources are derived from inorganic donor. And carbon sources are occupied from organic carbon, not CO2. So that tells us about the nutritional requirement of this category. Sulfur oxidizing bacteria such as Bagiota, Bagiotoa actually falls under this category. Then chemo organoheterotrophy is the last category. You can clearly understand chemo means inorganic chemicals. Electron sources are organic donor because it's organo and then heterotrophy means carbon sources are derived from organic carbon not co2 most uh, non photosynthetic microbes fall under this category now now what i wanted to tell you that we started with complicated names but now we understand how to read these names and what these names can actually tell us about bacteria's nutritional requirement now next time when they talk about any of these complicated names you have the solution. I hope this short video was interesting enough. So overall in this video, we looked at basis of classification. We can use one basis as one filter to classify bacteria, like simple classifications, autotrophs or heterotrophs. We can also use a combination of these criteria as filters in terms of classifying the bacteria. In, in one set, we saw three of these criteria could be used together to classify them into five groups. And we understood what these nutritional requirements really means in terms of um, the sources of carbon energy and electron so i hope this is useful if you like this video don't forget to support my channel in patreon you can use my uh, beam upi qr code to pay me in beam small contribution means a lot to me my courses are there in unacademy which is india's biggest learning platform you can use my code ap10 to get a 10 percent discount thanks for listening and don't forget to like share